Defense and aerospace giant Lockheed Martin just reporting results. I'm going to get straight over to Morgan Brennan, who joins us with those numbers. Andrew, good morning. A beat for Lockheed Martin. Earnings of 6.73 per share on revenue of 16.88 billion dollars. Those are both better than expected. Free cash flow, two and a half billion dollars. Sales up two percent. But the biggest weapons maker reaffirming full year guidance. CFO Jay Malavi noting tough comps for the fourth quarter. Lockheed's backlog just below Q2's record high, 156 billion now. And Malave telling me the quote significant driver is again missiles and fire control amid demand for. HIMARS and GMLRS, PAC-3s, Javelins, as the U.S. sends supplies to Ukraine and replenishes its own stockpiles. A big order for Sikorsky CH-53K helicopters as well. But meeting demand has been the challenge across the industry post-pandemic. COO Frank St. John telling me he's seeing some, quote, overall improvement in the supply chain, but still some issues around things like solid rocket motors, which actually power missiles. Regarding the Israel-Hamas war, St. John saying they're, quote, really hoping for a rapid restoration of security in the region with minimal loss of life. Lockheed is already ramping production across weapon systems due to Ukraine. St. John noting they, quote, don't see any issues associated with this new development impacting our ability to support the U.S. government and its allies in what's required. Defense stocks have rallied since the contra- conflict began. Lockheed shares up 10 percent. They've given up some of those gains over the past week. Plus, analysts have argued it's unlikely to affect sales materially at this stage for the defense contractors. Malave noting with capacity already growing, he, quote, wouldn't expect really any change to Lockheed's projections for the next few years. Now, an F-35, this is a quarter of company revenue, so it's watched closely. Deliveries of the tech refreshed fighter jets, TR-3, recently pushed to next year. Executives telling me they're expecting between April and June. Complicating the entire defense picture, though, is the U.S. government operating on continuing resolution. That expires November 17th. You've got no elected Speaker of the House yet. For a prime contractor like Lockheed, if it's all resolved relatively soon, it's not a big deal. It's a company that can self-fund. But assuming an extended CR, the longer that goes... Spending doesn't increase for particular programs. New ones can't be awarded. Malave saying, quote, to the extent that we're reliant upon that in our financial forecasts, that can become problematic. You can see shares right now of Lockheed with the top and bottom line beats up fractionally right now.